Welcome to the ELB podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new openings this week. I'm Ben No, and unfortunately, Sin won't be joining us this week, so it's just gonna be me. So we have two wide releases opening last weekend. We have the comedy Daddy's Home 2, uh, starring Mark Wahlberg and uh, Will Ferrell, uh, fe- also featuring uh, Mel Gibson and John Lithgow as their respective fathers who are visiting uh, for Christmas. And then there is uh, Murder on the Orient Express, which is a new adaptation directed by Kenneth Branagh. He's also starring in the movie, along with Johnny Depp, Michelle Pfeiffer, Daisy Riley, Judy Dench, Derek Jacoby, Michael Pina, Penelope Cruz, William Defoe, John Gadd, on and on and on and on. So it's, co- it's pretty much an all-star cast on this uh, take on a classic, Murder on the Orange Express. It's, it's a novel, of course, uh, if you don't know it. Uh, it's, it's another adaptation. Uh, the, the novel was adapted way back when. I forget, but this is a new one, and Considering the talent involved in this movie, the production budget is surprisingly low. It's only $55 million. And uh, with that, uh, they're able to rope in all these people, all these uh, these uh, named name people uh, to star in the movie. So uh, let's see how these movies did uh, over the weekend. Um, okay, let's, let's jump right in. The number one movie of the weekend was uh, still Thor Ragnarok, uh, coming uh, in number one, um, uh, you know, as expected, right? Uh, the movie opened huge. Uh, it opened to uh, 122 million, which is the the highest opening for a Thor movie. I mean, it dropped about 54 percent in the second weekend, um, put in about 57 million, uh, which is still pretty good uh, for especially for a movie that opened so huge. The domestic gross right now is 211 million, and overseas it grows uh, over 400 million, uh, 438 for a worldwide total of uh, 650, which um, at that number al- uh, allows Thor Ragnarok to break, you know, to break into the top 10 grosses worldwide for 2017. So yeah, pretty pretty good for the third uh, Thor movie. This Marvel Cinematic Universe is chugging along, and uh, them uh, able to pull in all these uh, uh, various uh, team ups with, uh, f- for instance, in Thor Ragnarok is is pretty much Thor and the Hulk, and you know Loki and other characters. But it's pretty much uh, from the Avengers is Thor and Hulk, uh, and uh, they were able to uh, form a pretty good team. It's well reviewed, and 93 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So you know for superhero movies, that's excellent. Very good yeah and the cinema score is an a so it's very well reviewed and it's uh, rewarded by the the audience the general audience the moviegoers with a huge opening and it's able to hold on well uh but uh this weekend we have J- justice league opening so we might see the number uh, number drop a bit the door ragnarok third, third weekend's uh, number drop a bit or you know door ragnarok could affect justice league opening as well or we'll we'll get to that or i'll get to that since, since it's not here expect good things from Door. I mean, it it will. Uh, let's see if it can crack a three three hundred million uh, domestic gross for Thor Ragnarok, which I, it probably will. All right, let's move on to number two, which is one of the new releases uh, last weekend. Is Daddy's Home Two? Uh, <laughs> it pulled in about uh, thirty. It opened to thirty million uh, over the weekend. Let's see our projection. Our projection for Daddy's Home Two. Um, I was pretty low on the movie. The first movie opened to 38 million. It went on to make 150 million domestically, 242 million worldwide. So it's a surprise hit, uh, you know, considering, um, it, you know, uh, it's a comedy. And it stars Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, uh, you know, in a comedy. And I said that the reason why uh, our numbers were low is because, uh, you know, especially for my, for me, I said Thor Ragnarok is still going to be strong in theaters, and there is going to be competition from, uh, you know, Bad Mom's Christmas um, as well, uh, since they're both comedies, uh, uh, you know, uh, tending to t- attract the adult audience. But uh, but maybe the demographics might be different, males versus females. But uh, you know, there's going to be some crossovers and. Uh, apparently not apparently my <laughs> concerns were unfounded uh, Sen said the movie would, uh, uh, would open to about 25 million to 30 million and uh, his projection is actually closer to what uh, daddy's home 2 actually took in he was right there with daddy's home 2 projection 
we talked about the movie last weekend and we said you know uh, these concepts might be one-offs a, w- a one-off movie and uh, the ideas you know they, they might milk the ideas dry with, you know with the first movie and they will struggle with the second movie and it seems like it's kind of unfounded I mean even though the second movie's uh, opening is lower about 8 million lower than the first movie you know it, it's still kind of be a- able to retain its audience given that it's still in competition with uh, Thor Ragnarok you know because that's the the must-see movie uh, of the weekend, right? And then, and then there's another one, uh, a new release that's uh, in theaters, uh, you know, in competition as well, which we'll get to. So uh, to be able to open to about 30 million, I think it is, it's actually pretty good. Uh, although review-wise, it's not good. I mean, that Daddy's Home 2 has a 16% on Rotten Tomatoes, so terrible reviews. Uh, let's see. Um, what the audience score is, the cinema score for Days Home 2 is A minus, so there's kind of a disconnect there. Critics hated it, audience thought it was, it's an okay movie, you know, A minus is an okay movie. When the reviews and the audience score kind of doesn't match match up, so you know, it might not have that, it's, it might not be that leggy. Uh, normally, when it's leggy, when the reviews are good. Uh, cinema score. I mean, the uh, the audience score is good. Then, then that's that, that's where it's leggy. But there's this huge disconnect there. So, uh, you, you know, it might appeal to a certain demogra- you know, certain uh, audience, and you know, it might turn others off. Uh, people who would want to watch other things, like you know, would go to fresh movies, for example. So that is home to open less than the first movie. Going with that line of thinking, you know, you would think the second movie would grow slower than the first movie. So we'll, we'll see how leggy it, it, it will be. Okay, let's move on to number three, which is surprisingly uh, for me, uh, it's Murder on the Orient Express. It pulled in about 28 million, which is, you know, about right there with Daddy's Home 2. Uh, it stars um, Johnny Depp and others. I thought that it's a period piece, and I don't think that would appeal to the general audience. Surprisingly, uh, it did uh, it put in 28 million, and both Sen and I said this movie could open to about uh, would open to about 15 million, and it you know kind of almost double that, uh, uh, double our projections. And I guess the older crowd, older crowd. I mean, Daddy's Home 2 and Murder on the Orient Express, according to reports, uh, you know, the, most of the people are like 25 and older. The, you know these two movies are supported mur- mur- murder on the own express especially or uh, you know supported by the uh, an older group uh and like you know and the young people would normally just w- go to watch uh Dor ragnarok so older cra- older crowd turn up out for daddy's home 2 and murder on the orange express express especially murder on the orange express because it's a, a thriller comedy drama and i thought that w- that wouldn't be that appealing but apparently um, you know, there's a group that that uh, w- want this movie. Again, I was wrong. Uh, we both are wrong, and uh, we'll see how this movie uh, will hold up. I mean, the reviews are okay, uh, 58%, which is barely rotten. You know, it's almost there on the fresh. And uh, for cinema scores, a B. So um, we might see kind of a, a drop at the second weekend, a huge drop, because of course there's another huge movie coming up, right? Uh, but the budget is about 55 million, so. Mm, you know, I, th- I think it's on solid ground. Let's see uh, if it opened overseas yet, uh, and it did. Uh, overseas, it has already opened, and probably not that uh, wide yet, but it uh, managed to pull it in about 57 million for uh, a total of uh, 80, uh, 85 million worldwide. So it, it's going there. So, you know, even though uh, it might not be that big here, I mean, it, you know, uh, nearly 30 million is pretty good. You know, for fifty-five million dollar uh, budget movie, uh, it's it's a good, very good opening. So if it managed to hold it, you know, it could, it's going to be a, 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 a modest hit here. And uh, worldwide, seems like it's off to a good start since it hasn't opened in in any of the huge territories yet. This is one of the cases where throwing stars at a movie works, right? Uh, all these all stars, <laughs> so it works for this one. All right, let's move on to number four. It's about Mom's Christmas. It kind of held on. The the drop off is kind of like the lowest of the movies in the top ten at about thirty one percent. Uh, pulled in eleven point five million over the weekend. Uh, that's the second weekend. Uh, domestic gross right now is about thirty nine million. The budget is twenty eight. So already it already uh exceeded its budget, right? So it's it's all good from here and. It hasn't opened that wide overseas yet, and uh, as but as you, we know, comedies over don't usually travel well overseas, and the foreign figures right now is about about 
nearly about uh, nearly seven million uh, for a worldwide take of 46 million but you know uh, we i expect batman's christmas is gonna uh have uh, the bulk of its uh you know box office growth uh domestically and Bad Mom's uh, Christmas is a sequel to, I think, 2016's uh, Bad Mom. That movie opened to $23 million and went on to gross $113 million. And that movie was very leggy. Uh, we'll see if this movie holds as well. And according to the drop-off, it's, it's actually pretty decent. So, But we don't know if uh, you know, it'll uh, make the same amount or exceed the $113 million, But probably not. Probably not since it's opened lower. And uh, it can only go down from here. Uh, and with all, the, all these kinds competition you know it, it might not reach a hundred million but hey you know the budget is low uh, but the budget is only 28 million so it's going to do well it's going to be another a modest hit for stx and you know this bad mom's brand right now it'll, pr- it'll go to three movies or, or more uh, we'll, we'll see what the next bad moms is <laughs> so expect to see more bad moms Okay, uh, moving on to number five is Jigsaw, the horror movie from Lionsgate. It is the eighth Jigsaw movie, the or movie in this franchise, um, the Saw franchise, I guess. Jigsaw is the title character, uh, the uh, the main bad guy uh, who tortures people. Uh, it pulled in about three point four million in its third weekend. Drop off is about forty eight percent from its previous weekend. Domestic gross is about thirty four million. But hey, you know the budget is ten million. You know Lionsgate is all already counting profits um you know they're planning more jigsaw movies probably most likely uh worldwide growth is 79 million uh so hey you know there will, will be more of these torture porn movies coming since they're able to make this movie for 10 million expect uh you know the next movie to be uh budgeted you know around that there and you know for the movie to do well uh, come you know uh, halloween next year or uh, you know there will be another j- uh, jigsaw 2 for example that's probably the title <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, it's doing well for this franchise hey the audience is still there for this movie for this uh, franchise and they're gonna make more they will make more all right number six is tyler perry's boo 2 a Medea halloween a rare sequel to the uh, Medea franchise uh tyler perry uh, him in these uh, various guises uh in this uh, old persona Medea, this woman cross-dressing woman well she's a woman in the movie and uh you know the whole Medea series is pretty much a series running sequel but this is uh you know Medea halloween is actually a rare one where they took the concept and run you know and do an- another movie based on the same concept uh which is the halloween the horror movie drop off is about 55 percent i pulled in about two million over the weekend 45 million or about nearly 46 million domestic take budget is 25 million yeah worldwide it's nothing to speak of it's not it hasn't opened that wide yet so worldwide growth is about 46 million so it, not, not significant yet but just 25 million already made 45 million it's gonna do well on home video uh, you know it's a, in the long line of the these Medea movies so yeah Tyler Perry's um you know I'm gonna make more uh, Medea movies I'm not sure if they're gonna make more uh, Halloween movies since this one is uh, uh, the gross is not as high as the previous one the, the first uh, Medea Halloween movie uh, gross uh, 73 million and this one is not there yet and it'll probably top off at maybe um, what 55 or so million maybe uh, so we'll see so there it goes and we might see more boo or we might not see it I think it all depends on how it does on home video all right, number seven, uh, moving along, is Geostorm. It's the disaster movie starring Gerard Butler, you know, the one about satellites being able to control weather and them falling down, uh, causing all these, um, you know, natural disasters, uh, but man-made. <laughs> Uh, it pulled in about 1.5 million over the weekend. A huge drop off again, 52 million from previous weekend. Budget's 120 million. Uh, domestic gross is about 31 million. Let's see if it can, if the uh, overseas market can save this movie. Let's see. Overseas, uh, it pulled in 167 million, and uh, for a worldwide total of 199 million. The budget is 120 million. It needs to make over three. 300 million to break even so it's a long way from there so this movie will lose money for uh, Warner Brothers at least theatrically so maybe home videos can save it maybe a miss for Warner Brothers and Gerard Butler 
Okay, uh, number eight, moving along, is Blade Runner 2049. They put in 1.5, 1.4 million over the weekend. Domestic gross is 88 million. Budget is 150 million. Uh, uh, worldwide take is 242 million. So, yeah, you know, it's not doing as well as we hope. You know, being a Blade Runner fan, uh, it needs to, uh, you know, make over 300 and it's not good getting there. Uh, domestic is not getting help domestically. Foreign uh, take is not that uh, big as well. We said the reason why is that you know like the overseas market people don't like the complicated meditative uh sci-fi movies they want action they want you know uh, explosions and um blade runner 2049 is is not it and i guess that's why the reason that that you know that the take domestic is so low and you know, overseas as well okay number nine is happy death day put in about 1.3 million drop off is 51 million huge drop off but for home movie of course but hey you know it's doing very well because the budget is about 5 million they already put in about nearly 55 million domestic hey 5 million you're able to uh gross uh 88 million worldwide huge huge success all right, rounding out the top 10 is a, a movie called Lady Bird by A24. It pulled in about 1.2 million over the weekend and expanded, uh, getting additional theaters. Uh, stars uh, Sorcy Ronan, uh, Tracy Letts, uh, directed by Greta Gerwig. And that's all, all I want to say about this movie. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's move on to the uh, new releases um, this weekend. Uh, we have three wide releases. We have the Justice League movie, which is the I guess uh, from the DC Cinematic Universe, the movie that's following um, uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, there is the Star, uh, you know, a a Sony uh, Sony animation about uh, G, you know the birth of Jesus, the nativity tale, uh, from the perspective of the animals. Um, and then there is the heartwarming uh, movie called Wonder, uh, starring Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. Uh, let's start off with uh, Justice League, since that's the biggest movie uh, that's going to be opening this weekend. According to Box Office Mojo, it's going to be released in over 4,000 theaters, so it's going to be the biggest one there. They're going to drop uh, screens from the other movies. And, you know, Justice League movie is the one where, you know, they'll, the, you know, Ben Affleck as Batman goes out to recruit uh, other um, superheroes uh, like Aquaman, Cyborg, The Flash, uh, Wonder Woman, of course. Um, and I think Superman might make a return in this movie. You know, what is Justice League without Superman, right? But before he comes and saves the day, you know, the, the rest of the four or five will have to make do you know, to form a team. Uh, you know, no reviews yet on Rotten Tomatoes, but uh, if we look at previous DC superhero movies, for example, uh, Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, which is the prequel to this one, it opened to 100, 166 million, 330 million domestic, 873 million worldwide. And Wonder Woman, the previous, uh, the, 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 the latest movie the, in the DC universe, um, the origin, movie, origin story of, you know, uh, Wonder Woman, um, opened to 103 million, did uh, 821 million uh, worldwide. Yeah, so it's, do, you know, doing uh, well here. And I think that goodwill from Wonder Woman, woman is going to probably carry off, uh, carry all, uh, on to, to Justice League. And um, and then Ben Affleck. How high will this movie open to, right? Uh, can, can this movie uh, open uh, or 200 or it's going to be around the same as, uh, you know, Dawn of Justice? Um, I think it's going to be the same. Uh, I think it's going to open up in the same range as um, Batman vs. Superman, I, I believe. Batman vs. Superman, of course, is the, you know, hyped up uh, concept about Batman, uh, you know, going up against Superman. And, uh, you know, it's a fight people want to see, although it disappointed a lot of people. Y you know, reviews weren't that great, I believe. Let me see. Batman vs. Superman has a tomato meter of 
Uh, reviews weren't great, but people went turn out for it anyway. I think it's because of you know the hyped up nature of two you know titans uh, you know in the superhero universe, uh, you know just staring at each other, <laughs> and all their trouble is sorted out by the moms and you know by one of their moms I guess Martha. Um, Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice was kind of hyped up, but uh, Justice League uh, is probably not as hyped up. Uh, Superman's not; it's probably in it's probably in the movie, but he's gonna be late in coming to the movie. There's Wonder Woman, you know, she's very popular. There's Batman. I guess he's kind of popular, but we don't know yet, right? And of course, Justice League is a launching pad for the Aquaman movie that's coming up. Um. So I, I, I guess it, you know, following that, you know, people might n- not be as hyped up with uh, the Justice League movie as uh, with Batman versus Superman. So I think the opening is probably going to be around the same. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's going to open to 160 million. Why? Because I think Thor is still going to be uh, going to steal some, you know, uh, box office dollars from uh, Justice League. You know, they're both superhero movies. They're both big action set pieces, and um, you know, there, 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 going to be some comparison. You know, Thor is just a like a fun popcorn movie, and Justice League, uh, you know, is 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 dark, going with the, uh, you know, uh, the theme that's set down by uh, Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder. Um, as as we know, uh, Justice League, you know, the final editing was uh, taken by uh, Josh Whedon, uh, you know, uh, from Zack Snyder, who has to take a a break hi- hiatus uh, because. You know, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, I guess his uh, daughter to suicide uh, killed herself, and she he needed you know time away. And Josh Whedon, uh, you know, came over and took over the project from him and, and did some edits. Uh, so there it goes. Uh, I I think Justice League might not might not open that hu- huge, but it's going to be huge in, anyway. So what, uh, I think it's going to open to 160 million. All right. Let's move on to the Sony animation, The Star, a uh, nativity tale uh, from the perspective of animals, birth of Jesus Christ, you know, three wise men. There's going to be talking animals, of course, like donkeys, you know, the main character. Uh, there are the three camels uh, rode on by the three sages, uh, voiced by, you know, Oprah Winfrey and um, Tracy Morgan, Tyler Perry. So there's Gina Rodriguez, the donkeys voiced by... Steven uh, Yuen, I, I believe. So all these um, characters, Sony Animation, you know, uh, in the promo they say from the people who did uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatball, uh, same studio, same same animation studio. Here's the thing, right? Justice League is gonna open huge because it's, that's the movie to see. Uh, the store in the movie, assuming it drop another fifty percent, it's gonna probably open in the I mean it's probably gonna have a a, a 20 plus weekend there's murder on the Orient Express uh, it pro- you know another drop off of the uh, 50% it's probably gonna be in you know in the uh, you know 15 million range or so so you know there's not gonna be a lot of money left over for the star and wonder uh, which we'll get to again so where will the star how, how will the star open to you know it, it sounds like it, you know, it's a good movie, right? Because, but then again, it's a, it's a movie that's um, about a well-told movie already, you know, about the birth of Jesus Christ, but from animals. Uh, there is an audience for that, of course, the family audience, and for people who are of Christian faith, uh, you know, this, it, this movie might be appealing to them. So how will this movie open to? How, how big will this movie open to? You know, like, Cloudy had a, a, a 30 million opening. Um, if we compare that to that, it's gonna open to thirty millions. But it's already in a very crowded theater, you know. So some movie is uh, are, are gonna have their screens um pulled pulled to to play these movies. And Star, I believe, is gonna be opening over three thousand theaters. So that's a, that's a lot. Uh, three thousand locations or theaters, whatever how how it's counted. I think let's go for it. Let's let's go for twenty five to. Uh, 30 million for the star since you know it's it's by Sony Animation. Uh, animation quality is there. You know the comedy is there. The family audience, especially this time for Christmas, you know parents might want to take their kids to watch a you know the tale about the birth of Jesus Christ. And of course, there's uh, f- funny animals, talking animals to entertain the the, the kids. So you know it's all, it's all there. It's all there uh, for the family crowd. Uh, so 20, 25 to 30 million, I believe. 
And that leaves us to wonder the final movie that's opening uh, the wide release, uh, starring Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. Uh, you know who's uh, who, uh, who played parents to a kid who has multiple surgery on his face, so uh, you know his face becomes scarred, and he's going back to school. And you know it's a story about the kids, the students initially avoiding him, making jokes, uh, making him feel bad, and then finally learning to accept him, uh, him accepting himself. You know, it's based on a novel by R.J. Palakau, best-selling, I believe. <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, there's not a lot of space for these uh, for these movies, right? Not a lot of space uh, for Wonder. So uh, let's let's go with. Uh, but then there's Julia Roberts, right? Julia Roberts is still sort of a draw, but not that big of a draw anymore, right? Owen Wilson is there. I think there are still it's, uh, there are audience who are looking for tame affair. I believe and that's and that's something just, you know it's not everything. It's not a world of destruction. You know explosions, actions, uh, you know religious materials, etc. You know some people wanting f- more you know innocent fair. I believe and the uh, wonder is for them. Um, so how will it do? It is actually pretty wide according to box office mojos, like over three thousand theaters. Uh, so it's pretty wide, but doesn't mean that people are gonna choose this movie, right? Um, how, how about this? Um, let's go with uh, ten million. So ten million for Wonder. All right, that's uh that's where I have the three new releases: Justice League, uh, one hundred sixty million, because you know Thor is going up against Thor. I think the hype of the Batman vs Superman died off. Although they might get a bump from Wonder Woman, 160 million conservatively. You know, it might it might open to higher, but that's where I, that that's the number I'm gonna stick to, uh, because hey, you know, Batman vs Superman wasn't well regarded anyway. You know, people have a lot of issue with the movie. I think that carries over, but it might get a little bump from Wonder Woman. Who knows? Uh, the stars and nativity tale animation from Stony Animation. Same people who made Cloudy with a chance of meatball, um, you know, twenty five to thirty million because hey, you know, it has all the ingredients like children's movie, Christian movie, um, it's all there. Uh, so twenty to twenty five million opening, uh, and Wonder, you know, it's a lesser movie. I I feel you know not because you know because the story is um, tamer. I guess uh, something that you would see on TV, Hallmark Channel, for example. Um, so you know, cheerfully, ten million. Uh, but wouldn't be surprised if it opened lower. So hopefully, we get back. Uh, with Sin will um join us next podcast. So until then, tune in next week. <laughs>